Buenas tardes. En 72, yo recibí un beca de Naciones Unidas para trabajar en Chile, Argentina y Perú. Y en 72, yo puedo hablar español. Ahora, no. Yo he olvidado casi todos. Entonces, I would continue in English. Uh, I'm so sorry. I just need to come back to Sureste a lot. Then I'll pick it up. Um, I'm a bit constrained because I'm a restless person and I'd like to walk, but as the microphone is here, I will have to be behind this. From global ideas to local actions, challenges to sustainable development, this is my title. And I would like to say, good evening, friends of sustainable development. I think what I've heard today is fascinating. This is the third time I have the honor to participate in these seminars, and I go home every time enriched, more information, more ideas, and to support what was said twice by earlier presenters, utopia is possible, and I believe in that, not the least after tonight. So, we've been speaking, Arbert, my colleague and friend, spoke about the UN negotiations in climate. I will go up again, we've been in, in the grassroots area, I will go back up again to the UN and talk about the UN issues. In 2012, the United Nations concluded a two-year process that ended up in Rio de Janeiro with a summit on sustainable development. Close to 40,000 people participated. Every country in the world was there. About 100 state leaders uh, uh, <clears throat> attended. What is called the biggest surprise coming out of Rio was the sustainable development goals. And last year, in September, in 2015, a new plan of action was made, and our new future is sustainable development, that's what I say, and the sustainable development future comes through 17 sustainable development goals known as the SDGs. So, remember that acronym. This is a new plan for every country, every city, every municipality in the world, at least in theory. 140 state leaders signed on to this last year. Every country in the world has pledged we will accomplish this. The Global Summit at the UN, with 140 state leaders, adopted the, world call, uh, the plan called Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It's ambitious, and it will direct our policies for the next 15 years. The SDGs also come with targets. There are 169 targets to these 17 SDGs. And they could be used, they should be used, they must be used as guidelines for sustainable development policies, no matter where you are, if that's locally, if the regionally, nationally, sub-regionally, or globally. The goals were developed by the United Nations member states over two years. So negotiations took a long time. But what's important is that these goals were a, the result also of a strong engagement by civil society. The UN also had a, in, an internet portal where civil society gave more than two and a half million contributions. So this has been a, a biggest consultation in the history of humanity nothing less. Now, you need to know these 17 goals, and as you've heard, there will be something happening later in this week, and one of the tests you will be given is if you remember all the 17 goals, so you just have to sit down and memorize them, and you will be asked these questions time and again. I'll just run through them, and I use the English version. If you go to the Internet in the United Nations, homepage on sustainable development. Everything that I present here is also in Spanish. 
Goal number one, end poverty. Goal number two, end hunger. Number three is about healthy lives. Four is equitable quality education. Five is about gender equality. Six, unsustainable management of water and sanitation. Seven, access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy. Number eight, economic growth and full employment. Number nine, resilient infrastructure and sustainable industrialization to foster innovation. 10 is reduce inequality. And look at what it says, in countries and between countries. 11 is about uh, cities. 12 is about consumption and production. 13, about climate change. We'll not go into that because Arvid covered that excellently this morning. 14 is about oceans. 15 is about biodiversity and ecosystems and to combat desertification. 16 is about peaceful and inclusive societies. 17 means of implementation. These are the 17 goals. And as I said, they're supplied with 169 targets. And they're interlinked. Let's just look at that. You can also look at the, 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 the SDGs in this way. And may I say one thing which is heartfelt for me. When the United Nations agreed to this, or when the member states agreed to this, all many of us said, finally, sustainable development is at the top level of the agenda. What happened next, back in September? Well, part of the United Nations, because it's a big organization, part of it doesn't think, gave the promotion of the Sustainable Development Goals to a private public relations company. And the guru in the United States said, Sustainable Development, too complicated. We'll just call them Development Goals. No, we'll call them Global Goals. And they just deleted Sustainable Development by the stroke of a pen. Don't do that here. These are called Sustainable Development Goals. That's it. The declaration taken in, the tw in 2015 is called a people's agenda. If you read it, you'll find it's a to-do list for all of us to save the planet. It's a roadmap to end poverty and building a life of dignity for all. And it's a call to intensify efforts to heal our planets for this and for future generations. Now, this is important. The SDGs, all 17 of them, and all the 169 targets are integrated, interlinked, and indivisible. This is important because you can't just say, we'll do goal number five. Because goal number five will affect goal number seven and nine and 10. And goal number 11 will perhaps affect one and two and three. That's why they're interlinked. It is a real effort to look at a world in a holistic manner. Second one, they are people-centered and planet-sensitive, and they're universal. And this is the paradigmatic change. They are universal. They apply to every country in the world. This is not a plan to help fight poverty in Africa, Asia, or Latin America. This is something that concerns every country, ours included. The SDGs affect all and will be implemented about all by the UN for the world, by the EU for Europe, by Spain for the Spanish people, and by Sureste for its own inhabitants. Don't wait for the government to start this. You can start right now, because every government signed on to this last September, saying that the SDGs will start functioning 1st of January 2016. The global plan is important to read and also in Spanish, as I said, and it contains, in addition to the 17 SDGs, 169 targets. And I've listed all the rest of this because the text is interesting. It's divided as a typical UN document. I'm not going to be technical about this because it's late in the day. But let's look at the SDG specific. specific this is incorrectly spelled. I, I wrote it last night. Specificities. Sorry about that. The SDGs do have an interesting value basis. 
They call for building peaceful, inclusive, and well-governed societies and responsive institutions. We are asked to hold governments accountable. Governments have signed on to that, and they ask us to be our watchdogs, their watchdogs. They recognize that we cannot reach our development goals without addressing human rights. There are humanitarian issues there. Multilateral cooperation and global partnerships are important if we are going to reach the goals. Ethics, setting new standards, regulatory issues, common responsibility, aspirational, creative, innovative, and above all, the integration of the three dimensions, the social, the environmental, and the economic dimension. Just pay attention to the fact that the UN does not talk about the three pillars of sustainable development. They now talk about the three dimensions. And there is a conceptual difference between a pillar and a dimension. You cannot integrate three pillars. If you try, they crumble. But you can integrate dimensions. Reviewing the process of implementation is going to be very important, and I'll come back to that in a little bit, but the document is politically brave. It's a courageous document, unexpected perhaps by the UN and its 193 member states. Unfortunately, this is not translated like the five Ps in Spanish, but the UN talks about the five Ps in English, which is the basis again for the 17 goals. People, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnerships. Let me digress two seconds and, and tell you about an interesting meeting I had, a conference where I gave this talk, to CEOs of a big company, big companies. There were about 35 multilateral companies in the room, and I asked one of the CEOs to please read the, the five Ps, and I had asked him first, what is the triple bottom line of a business? And he said quickly, paper, planet, and profit, which is commonly known throughout the economic world. And then I asked him to read the five Ps, and he said, without thinking, people, planet, profit, peace, and partnerships. And I said, no, that's not what it says. And he said, yes, it is. And I said, no. And he read it again, and it's people, planet, prosperity. And he looked at me and said, isn't that the same as profit? And we had a very interesting discussion after that. Prosperity is important, not profit. Let's just look a bit <clears throat> about a few random goals. Have I jumped something here? Sorry, we'll come back to that. Um, ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all is important. Ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy, that's goal seven. Goal 11 is, as I said, on cities, and goal 14, unsustainably use of the oceans. I've just randomly picked these goals. Just to look at the targets. 6.3 is to improve water quality, and this is how the target now goes into detail and tells you what to do. Reduce pollution, eliminate dumping, minimize release of hazardous chemicals and materials, half the proportion of untreated wastewater substantially increasing recycling and safe reuse globally. And then, of course, you can ask, are we doing that here? Is my country, Norway, doing that? Is every country in the world doing that? If not, they will have to do that. Goal 6.4 says by 2030, increase water use efficiency across all sectors and ensure sustainable withdrawals of supply of fresh water to address water scarcity. They, every goal has all these targets and they go through them. I'll just pick a few more. By 2030, enhance international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and advanced and cleaner fossil fuel technology, and promote investment in energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. This is 7A under the energy goal. 11.2, 11.3, and 11.6, this is about cities. Accessible transport makes cities disaster safe. Reduce urban environmental impact, improve waste management, access to green public spaces. All of these goals have sub-goals. We'll jump over that. 
And they talk about sustainable tourism, which is also a very interesting thing. <clears throat> and they also go through every part of tourism and see how this is interrelated. Interestingly enough, the UN has a special agency on tourism which is based in Madrid. The World Tourism Organization has decided that these are the goals that affect tourism, and then they list them. And it's easy to, I won't go into the details because it's not really necessary. Carrying this out is going to be costly. Between three and five trillions of dollars per year. I do not understand that sum. But what choice do we have? The official development aid, ODA, will continue to play a role for the poorest nations. But we need to invest in sustainable development in our future. We can't say that we cannot afford this. And actually, the documents I've referred to challenges the governments to say, do it, do it well, and do it now. Now, <clears throat> this is something to look out for, because how can you measure anything if you don't have indicators? And the UN member states, all 193 of them, have engaged in a one and a half year discussion and negotiations on developing indicators for each of the targets, each of the goals. So this is close to the end, and if you again go to the UN, you'll find a very thick document with indicators on how to measure progress on each of the goals and each of the targets. Every year there will be a conference in New York where best cases and worst cases will be analyzed. Capacity building is necessary, innovation to fuel progress is necessary, environmentally friendly technology important, and <clears throat> interestingly enough, <clears throat> sorry, and for the first time in the history of the UN, I think, science and research have been given important roles in something called general policies. Science has always been present in climate issues or in purely environmental issues, but when you talk about general policies, this is the first time. So the review of progress is something that you can participate in because the UN is looking desperately for good cases. And I think Sureste is a fantastic good case. And the annual meeting, we will not go into that because there are too many details about that, but it's called the High Level Political Forum. Its abbreviation is HLPF. It stands for the High Level Political Forum. And when I am not very happy about what's happening, I say maybe we shouldn't call it the High Level Political Forum, but call it the High Level Political Fiasco. But that's another discussion. What does a global sustainable development agenda really mean? It's not about upgrading aid to the global south. It's not about changing our approach to development. It means that our local, national, and regional priorities must reflect the global priorities. It calls for the understanding, integration, realization, and implementation on an equal footing of the three dimensions of sustainable development. And before I completely close, I can't do that. Mm. Then I'd like to say that I'm being asked sometimes, why did I start to work with environment and sustainable development? And I said, because of a woman. And it's true. It was because of Rachel Carson, who wrote a book in 1962 called Silent Spring. Rachel Carson was an eminent researcher. She was an oceanographer and had excellent knowledge of what was happening to the oceans. And she detected the pollution, and she saw what was happening to the environment. If we had all listened to Rachel Carson in 1962 and done what she wrote in her book, Silent Spring, we would have been so much better off today. But she wasn't listened to because she was a woman. Her male colleagues said she's crazy. She's a loony. Don't listen to her. She's a hysterical female scientist, she said, they said in 1962. Today, everything she wrote about in that book has come true. The difference between 1962 and today is humongous. In 1962, Rachel Carson was alone and shouting for a better world. Today, there are millions of us. Today, there are millions of us 
wanting to create a better sustainable development tomorrow. And today, there are courageous people that are willing to listen to a guy from Norway at almost nine o'clock at night, as energetic as ever. And that, my friends, is optimism at work. I do believe we can create a better world, and I do believe we have started on that journey. And I do believe the SDGs will be a very instrumental tool in promoting sustainable development. And I believe Sureste can integrate these right now. Thank you for your attention.